Okay, so I am all but reasonably certain, but without being fully 100% certain, that I have managed to fix all the issues that we had earlier on the stream. So if you missed out earlier, uh, about three or four hours ago, we did a stream, uh, we did the first race of our uh, F1 2019 career mode. Um, the game has come out today for people who bought the Legends Edition that I have here. Um, so, because I want to keep working on the career mode, I thought I'm going to do another stream because I want to make sure that I keep it relatively up to date for all you fine people out there. Not that we're going to be... Um, doing the entire career mode on stream just a few streams uh to capitalize on the launch of this game now i if you were watching that stream uh you may have noticed that there was a large amount of frame drops now i think i have fixed the problem and i will explain what the problem was as we go along um but for now we're gonna get to some we're gonna get back to some more driving uh, usual housekeeping stuff. Good evening, everybody. I hope you're all well. If you are new here, welcome. My name's Jared Hazel. I'm a streamer from New Zealand. Please do consider following or maybe you're subscribing, but having you here is much appreciated anyway. And if you are returning, make sure, if you are a returning viewer, sorry, make sure you do share the channel, guys. It is greatly appreciated as well. All right. So, round two. Bahrain. Off we go. And we start off with the cooling system fault. Fantastic. So, what I suspect the issue was is that uh, for those of you who uh, have been watching my channel for a while, you guys will know that uh, I recently got a brand new network card for my PC. When my PC was built, all I could afford was to get a standard single band Wi-Fi adapter because I have to run off Wi-Fi. I have to run off Wi-Fi. I wish I could run off the cable. At some point Unfortunately, I could not. Um, really wish Jeff would shut up. Um, so yeah, some of you will know that I got a new... Uh, Uh, yeah, got a new network card in my PC. A new dual band one, which allowed me to speed up my uh, PC, which was greatly, greatly needed. Uh, however, There's a few cars out on track. Um, so, so, so the side effect of that was I started streaming using the 5 gigahertz band of... A Wi-Fi. Now, that was a mistake because what I forgot to realize was that most of our devices in the house run off of that run off of that Wi-Fi band. And because of that, it was causing interruptions in the stream now because not many devices there's only two that utilize the 2.4 gigahertz band my pc for when i'm streaming and my ps4 it's a freer band of wi-fi there's less interference from other devices fighting for the bandwidth so because of that uh Okay, first thing I'm going to change when we get back to the pits is the brake sensitivity. Because it is really low. Um, oh, yeah, we need to... Oh, yeah, okay, no. We need to go... We need to massively improve that brake sensitivity. Um, so, yeah. So, when I stream... I've basically... Uh... 
I basically changed. Uh, we need to increase the brake pressure immensely. And because the brakes aren't really doing it, um, I don't think... Um, don't think that will change. I'll just bring the rear arrow up as well. Um, so yeah, so the long and short of it is, I'm pretty sure I've solved the problems. Um, and already I can see improvements, so that is good news. So I'm happy about that. It means that, uh, yeah, streams should be smooth with no major issues, which is good news. So, <laughs> Oop. Jesus Christ, there's a shake. Apologies for that. Breaks already a little better. So, uh, what did I do whilst I was off stream? I had dinner. I spent a little bit more time playing the game, uh, specifically uh, the F. I <laughs> did a bit more time in F2, getting myself used to uh, F2 a bit more. All right, breaks already miles better, and the downforce a little bit better as well. Um, yeah, so I spent a little bit of time. NF2, getting used to those cars. Um, spent a little bit of time in the classic cars, realizing that they've actually removed some of the classic cars. Um, also spending some time with the Prost and Senna content, driving those classic cars. Not gonna lie, it's a little disappointing. You know, there could be, it, it could be better, is my review of the center pros content could be better could be a lot better but it's not so oh well it's a shame but it is what it is car i don't know necessarily if the car isn't as working as well as australia i just think it's because i'm not it's funny, I've driven this track now for years, and I still can't really hook this track up. So, yeah, so there we go. So, pretty sure I've solved all the problems, which is good news for us, because it means that streams will hopefully continue to be remain uninterrupted so Great stuff. the other thing i've done in the off stream is i added the practice and qualifying time counters to the top right hand corner of screen just so i know um just so I know how much time is left in the relative sessions because I haven't been paying full attention to that and that is a great little feature that I'm not sure if it was in previous games but since it's in here now I'm going to take full advantage of it. So we're just going to run through the same practice programs we did for Australia and then we're going to get into qualifying in the race. Hopefully uh, the race is as interesting as the race we had in Australia. Um, Oh, and that reminds me, I do actually need to do some alterations to the settings, because I made some alterations off stream to just make it a little bit less annoying. Wow, it's amazing the car, like, the car should be able to brake at about 100 meters, but it just won't. Maybe I'm just overestimating the power of the brakes. I don't think we're going to be as strong here as we were in Australia. I know the Albert Park circuit really well. 
Um, and the other thing I like about the Albert Park circuit is that for every corner I have a visual braking marker as well as a as a you know distance board. Here, not so much. I mean, yeah, sure, they're the brake marker board signs at the exit of some of the turns, but most of them actually don't really have them. I kind of just have to estimate where to hit the brakes. Oh, and the car's gone. That inside curb is a pain. But I suppose that's what practice is for, to ensure that we solve all the problems and learn the track. Even though I've driven this track for years now, I should probably know it by now. This is a track I've always had difficulty with, though. I've never been a massive fan of this track. It's always been a track I found very difficult to drive. Um, especially getting the run out of the hairpins. That's why I run traction control on medium, because it gives me a bit more control over the throttle deployment. Because if you run it on full traction control, the throttle deployment uh, means you lose a lot of time coming out of the slower speed corners, especially. Ooh. And so you could never get a good run coming out of the corners. So... I will say this though, there is a very good chance that in a few weeks I may go and get a new capture card which will be so nice because it will allow us to capture these games in 60 frames a second rather than crappy 30 frames a second which is, you know, I run the stream at 60 frames a second, but the capture card only captures at 30. And I don't know why. I've put it to allow 60 frames a second, but it just won't do it. It will not take it. This lap far better than our last lap. The car handling very well. Okay, super job so far. We're getting great data. Stay focused. Look at that. You lose a second of time running wide in that hair in that first corner hairpin. second of time pain in the ass but it is what it is of course a lot of controversy a lot of controversy surrounding this team's title sponsor rich energy do they exist where can I find it? They're currently in a legal battle over their logo. I can very much tell you in New Zealand, I've never seen it. But then again, I'm not necessarily an energy drink drinker. Uh, and if I do, I only drink uh, what we know here as Alive or Live Plus. Rather, than, it used to be called Lift Plus. Was a far better name, but now they're calling it now they call it Live Plus or Live Plus or whatever the fuck it's supposed to be called. Lost a little bit of time in that final corner because I decided to break really late. Average tire wear five is that five point two five percent a lap? Because that's a lot of tire wear per lap. If that is the case, that is a shit ton of tire wear per lap. Yeah. 
We are taking off a lot of tire wear. How much time we got left in the session? Three minutes. Yeah, all right. Uh, we'll just go straight to practice two. It's time to remind ourselves of our top three. Who are Vettel, Hamilton, and Pierre... Who the hell am I? What an incredible practice. 16th. 2.3 seconds off the pace. Which is funny because I thought my laps were pretty decent. Then again, I wasn't... I was not running any qualifying pace laps nor in any qualifying related engine modes and i don't even know if the soft tire is the softest tire available for this race i'm pretty sure the super soft is but i could be wrong Of course, they have that new way of uh, naming the tire compounds for this year, which makes it all the more confusing. No, nope. all right, we want to. Yeah, so last session we didn't run these soft tires. We only ran these two. But now we actually have access to some softs. Uh, right, let us do the qualifying pace sim. Let's see how fast we can truly go with this car, with this setup. I'm not expecting great things. Probably plug in my controller since we got that low controller warning. Low battery warning. I will say the visual upgrade, I mean, look at the, look at the sliding conditions. That is fantastic. Brakes suddenly are a lot better for some bizarre reason. Look at the glare. That looks awesome. So much better than last year's game visually. All right, here we go. A qualifying simulation, and that's wide. Car skitting across the ground. Much better. I keep forgetting there's that third DRS zone now. So they reckon we're going to qualify ninth with a 131.8. Something tells me no. Hmm. Yeah. It's a shame because the car really is hooking up. It's got good grip. It's actually not got terrible grip. The grip is good. Grip is really good. But I just... 31.8. I don't know. Alright, we're going to go for another lap. We're running an overtake mode rather than hot lap mode. Alright, let's go again. Much better turn one this time. A better position for turn three and four or turn two and three sorry we're at the drs again we're already two tenths behind still two tenths behind Now three tenths behind. Now six tenths behind.
I don't know what it is about this track, but for some reason I just can't hook this track up. No matter how hard I try, I cannot get this track sorted. Losing seven tenths a lap. We, yeah, let's restart it because we're running out of ERS. <clears throat> hmm, pardon me. We are running out of ERS deployment if we keep going that way. Right, let's bung it down into overtake. Yeah, everything looks fine. I don't really know what much more we could do to get the car working in the way we need it to. Turn one, good exit out of turn two into turn three. Managed to save that because that was quite mucky through there. With three tenths up. lost all those three tenths we've gained them back and plus we've got surplus apparently that was a far sector too I would not agree with that. Good lap. We've hit our primary target time. So they want a 131.3 for 7th. No, they want a 130.8 for 3rd. No way. No way. No, 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 no. Not even possible. Not even Close to possible. Not even close. Alright. Um, let us do ERS management. There is the no way in hell we will qualify third for this race. I'm not even sure we'll get into Q3. If the pace of FP1 was anything to judge by, we will not get into Q3. We'll not even get into Q2 at that pace. So... We will have to rely on a good race strategy in order to... and some overtaking to really make sure that we uh, are able to come through on any sort of race performance. As before with Australia, knock the ERS down to one and just try and drive as fast as we can using only mechanical and aerodynamic grip to make up for our lack of straight line speed. Uh, Shibidata says, Hi mate, what difficulty are you on? So I am currently running 100 out of 110, which I believe is ultimate or something? Something like that, yeah. So I run pretty, I run quite high actually, especially playing on a controller. So, if that gives you any indication into my skill level, then that's good. But yeah, I run uh, at 100 out of 110, so... 
However, in terms of driving aids, it's medium traction control, full anti-lock brakes, automatic gearbox, but everything else is off, so... 6 tenths up, surprisingly. Quite surprised that we were able to get 6 tenths up. Alright, um... Let us do... So far, our first mm. is a 1 minute 31.3. Let's go for some fuel management. Tire management on this track is not going to be great. My history with tire management on this track is rubbish. And based on our race simulation, uh, we tend to wear through the tires on this track quite quickly, apparently. Especially with the high speed corners. That really takes the mickey out of the tires. Damn, can't... Wait, are we doing time management or fuel? Oh, I've forgotten. Fuel. Alright. We're testing fuel management here, so try to lift and coast going into the corners. Don't be too aggressive on the power, but remember, you still have to beat the minimum lap time. Yep, shut up, Jeff. I'd love to know where the other uh, detection point for this DRS zone is because I can never seem to find it. Lifting and coasting, eh? The one thing that we as F1 fans hate to see the drivers do. And yet the game actively encourages it. Maybe this is F1's way to get players to understand about the whole lifting and coast thing is... You know, we'll make them do it in the game. Then they understand what the drivers have to go through every race. Not that they have to lift and cut coast... Not that they have to lift and coast so much more these days because they've added that extra five kilos of fuel, which you wouldn't think would do much, but apparently it does a lot. But I will say, the aerodynamic braking in this year's game, far more pronounced. Last year, it didn't really do a lot. This year, you diff if you take your foot off the accelerator, you are slowing down at a far high rate. Might have something to do with the deeper rear wings. That could be it. All right, let's move on to qualifying. To close, yeah. so okay, so... We're four tenths off, but if we take the fact that Vettel, Hamilton, Bottas, Gasly, were all on a far softer tire. Or, or a harder tire, sorry. We we're on a far softer tire. I am not expecting me to finish second in qualifying. I would like to think that. But it really makes it, it but it make is making me wonder quite a bit. Have they really lowered the difficulty this year at the higher end? Because I remember having a lot more struggles in F1 2018 at this end of the difficulty spectrum. So I'm very curious. All right. Um, we are going to... Where is the car... Worst... Where is the car worst off? Yes, he's good. Engine's good. Okay, aerodynamics. So yeah, we'll keep upgrading this. Because the aerodynamics... Not that the car feels like it's lacking aerodynamics, I must say. The car does not feel in any way, shape, or form that it is lacking aerodynamics. 
or aerodynamic performance. The car is gripping through the corners exactly the way it should be. And I will say, I was watching some videos stating that a lot of people were finding the cars to be a tiny bit more understeery this year than last year. For me, that actually works perfectly fine. I'm finding a great amount of grip in these year, in this year's cars compared to last year's cars, which is funny can, when you consider the <sighs> downforce they've taken out of the front. You know, the front... You know, the front actually grips up in a really major way. Probably far better than last year, which is funny. So. Oh, good. It did get rid of that. I was driving the F2 cars earlier, and I changed the setting to get rid of that halo pylon, and the F2 car didn't get rid of it. Right, here we go. Hot lap. We're going to set it to four, because we'll run out of VRS by the end of the lap otherwise. Right, here we go. Semi decent turn one. A good turn two and three. Turn four, good. Don't be afraid to use that exit curb. Pretty good through there. Happy with that. A little wide there, but that's okay. You can use the excess track on the outside to remedy that. Right. Brake early. Easy on the power. DRS. 32 dead is our time to beat. Shouldn't actually be that difficult because the car should be a little wide. Okay, we're four hundredths of a second up. That was terrible. That was very terrible. Butler, with the 137. Break a little bit after 100 meters. Clip the apex very nice. Use the exit curb. Accelerate out on the DRS. 31.5, 7 tenths off of Butler. That isn't probably going to stay that way. We probably might need to do another run. Start of the lap wasn't actually that terrible. It was the end of the lap where it all fell apart. Where are we? In the, the fourth. Huh? The car setting screen on your multifunction display will allow you to change various settings. That can't be right. Open the display with the MFD button. You can then navigate up and down to the setting you want to change. Okay, I'm going to get out there for another run because I am not confident that we're going to make it through. I am not confident at all. If we make it through on a one th on a one thirty one five. I will be very surprised. Right. Good run out of the last corner for the start of the lap. DRS. Alright, far better turn one this time. No, okay, that was rubbish. Let's go back from here because we lost quite a bit of time. Turn four. Rear end a little bit on the slidey side, but that's okay. Not Nothing that I can't handle. 
on their 10th off, so provided we continue to keep it clean, could end up with a better lap. Good run out of there. Right, we're now up on our previous time. Right, we ran right wide here last lap. That probably cost us, yeah, so that cost us about three tenths running wide last lap. We ran wide up here as well. Look, we're already six tenths up. Good clip of the apex there. Definitely going to end up with a better lap. 130.8. So we're five tenths off. Isn't bad. I'm, I will accept five tenths off. That is that is a reasonable gap to the front. All right, so if we take those standings plus adding Gasly and Hamilton and, well, both the Renaults were ahead of us. But I think that was a very similar situation in Australia qualifying as well. I'm pretty sure the Australian qualifying ended up at the end of Q1. The Renaults were, like... If you look at the performance chart, the Renaults are supposed to be ahead of us. So I'm not so worried about losing out to the Renaults. What I am worried about losing out on is Q3. We cannot lose out on Q3. Lucky number 13, don't fail me now. Oh, we got a car in front. All right, get a bit of a gap. Stick that down to overtake. Build the gap slightly to the Renault in front. All right, here we go. DRS. No traffic in front of us. Clear air. A little wide coming out of turn one. Didn't really affect us for turn two and three that much. So we should be okay. Coming up to turn four. Good apex there. That was probably the best run we've had through turn four full stop. So maybe that will bring good omens for the rest of the lap. Got a little slidey coming out of there and that's too wide. No. Nah. It's a shame, we got turn four really well. Now, see the thing is, is as you come in here, you've got to clip that inside curb and then get the car in. You've got to get the car in, or otherwise the car just understeers out. We clip that curb. Yeah, there we go. And then allow the understeer. Uh, and the car's gone. Delay, click the crash. Right. right, let's try that again. You gotta, you gotta let the car's natural understeer do some of the work for you. Don't force the car. Allow the car to kind of do what it needs to do. Thirty point nine. Ooh. I don't think we've gotten to I don't think we've gotten into the 30s even in practice I don't think we got into the 30s and if we did I won't be getting in the 30s this lap this is a rubbish lap This is an utterly crap lap But we're strong in the final sector, so we might be able to make up some of that time. Apparently we're two tenths up.
I don't know about this. Oh, just 30.7. I don't know where that's going to put us. Our best lap so far is a 130.7. Butler did a 30.6. See, where, where are we losing most of our time? We're losing four tenths in sector two. We're losing... Oh, hold on, to Butler, sorry. Okay, to Butler, we're losing... Actually, we're not losing a large amount of time to Butler in any of the sectors, just a few hundredths of a second here and there. So actually nothing that massive. Obviously not going to compare ourselves to the top times. But it's close, man. It's really close. Hopefully I don't get knocked out. Oh, so close. But Daniel, okay, Ricardo's gone. Sainz is gone. Where's the other? Where's Grosjean? Oh my god, did he get knocked out in Q1? Okay. The fate of Haas resting on my shoulders, clearly. Always love it when I'm the guy who has to represent the team. And rolling up my sleeves is actually incredibly uncomfortable in this jacket. Unless I'm standing up, not sitting down and got my elbows like this. All right, we're only gonna do one run. Same as Australia, just one run. Best lap we can. And if it's 10th, it's 10th. At least we've out qualified Grosjean already, so. Better than nothing. Right, back off the pace. Get a little gap to the Red Bull in front of us. Knock it down to overtake. Alright. Here we go. DRS. Here we go. 330 k's per hour as we approach the hairpin at turn one. A okay, good entry into turn one will get us a good exit into turn two and three. That was really good, really clean. Another solid run through turn four. So far, the slap is solid as. That was a fantastic run through five and six. Okay, apart from that little bit of skating across the curves on the exit, this slap has been our best lap so far. Seven tenths off of boss ass, but we're not trying to beat boss ass. He's done a 29th. No way we're getting in the 29s. Okay, not so clean through the last corner, but didn't really affect us. We used the road on the exit of the corner. Time is a 37. Ooh, so not our best lap. Not our best lap by any stretch of the imagination. I think our best so far was a 30.5. We're seventh in the speed trap, 331. Yeah. Zero and per hour. you know what? I don't think we're going to get any faster. What did we... So what did we lose out? We actually lost about a tenth in sector one. And about a tenth in sector two. So realistically, we were only, you know, about in a tenth and a half in sector three. Virtually no time in sector two. Position is good. And again, about a tenth and a half in sector one. So about a tenth and a half. Well, we're only going to do one lap. With qualifying complete, let's review our top three today. Yeah. Leclerc and Lewis.
Lewis Hamilton. With qualifying wrapped up, we now have our grid. Again, much like in real life, the Ferraris dominate in Bahrain. Hopefully this time they'll actually get to win in Bahrain, because obviously in real life they did not. Much to my sadness. Just being a Ferrari fan this year is just tough. It is really tough. It is not fun to be a Ferrari fan this year whatsoever. It is really just... really difficult really difficult anyway prove the standings we should we should uh oh so we can't can't pick a rival all right let's get to the race Twenty five percent distance race around Bahrain. How well will we be able to do? I reckon if we get past Devon if we if we get past Butler and Weber and finish eighth, I'd be happy. I think a points finish would be great. Beating men would be better. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session. It's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion with Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Bottas, Max Verstappen, and Gasly, Perez, Butler, Iceman. <laughs> Butler, Iceman. That, that's so out of place. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. Oh wow, so they reckon I only last four laps on the super soft. Well here goes nothing. All right, and off we go. Russell's up in twelfth. Holy crap! Now he's up in a fifth. Somebody called 1992. They want their Williams back. Right, Butler's on our outside. Where'd Weber go? Butler's still there on our outside. Weber must have fallen down the field. Russell is attacking Gasly. This is the weirdest Formula 1 game I think I've ever played. Russell... Just no. Right, I'm going to take it easy this first lap, because as we saw in Australia, and we don't want to have to use about a million flashbacks this time. Oh, a little loss of downforce following the uh, racing point there. All right, let's get the ERS off of hot lap now that we've started the race. Oh, that was close to coming into the back of Perez. How the hell Russell has... Okay, this is going to be to our advantage because if we can get... Yeah, we aren't... Which is funny because the Ferrari engine's got the... The Ferrari engine's the best on the grid this year. This ain't right. He's going to lock up, go deep, or or not. I was hoping he'd go a lot deeper than that. Go around the outside. On the power. On the inside. Little touch there. Maybe the outside line will be my saving grace. Not real. Oh, no. It killed us. Utterly killed us. 
Killed us, killed us completely. How the hell is that Williams managing to keep Perez at bay? We're not going to get into a fight with Ricardo. At least not this one. Have we got any damage to the front wing? No. No damage to the nose either, that's good. Okay, who we got? Okay, we got Raikkonen behind us, but we dropped out of the points. Right, our goal needs to be to get back in the points. The Kimster is coming around the outside. We're gonna. Okay, I was hoping we'd break a little bit later. Ah, they've got better brakes than what I've got. I should have upped the brake pressure more. BRS. Where was the detection zone? Up the inside. Got him. Right. Now we got to catch back up to Ricardo. Alright. Perez has got past Russell. So now Russell can hold up the two Renaults. Uh, no, I just think he's stuck behind a Williams is why he's slowing down. That being said, he has backed off from Butler. Oh, wow, he is slow. Okay. Okay, fuel holding steady at a little bit over... Capacity. Now Butler's going to get. Uh, yeah, Butler's going to get. We're, We're doing what? Go back on the inside. Fortunately, that did not work how I thought it might. DRS. Having a lot of fun, I can tell you that. We got some good racing going on here, my friends. Right, we're gonna catch up to Butler ahead. And Russell. If Russell can hold Butler up, I can use that to be my way of catching up. However, I'm not as good at this circuit as I am at Albert Park. So I may not be able to catch up as quickly or as fast or at all. and turn down our ARS deployment before we run out of ours. As it is, we have to pit the slap. How are the tires? No! Shit! Whoa! Whoa, 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 What happened to Raikkonen? <laughs> great, great graphics, by the way. Ooh, we lost it. As he... Wait, he may have lost it. I don't... I don't know. Great graphics on the uh, Alfa Romeo there. Oh, they fixed themselves. That inside curb is killer. Oh, and we're going through the Rolex board. Oh, and we chopped off part of our front wing. <laughs> Do we? Little wide. Well, anyway, what I was going to do... Alright, yeah, we might want to pit. <laughs> right, now let's hope we don't get penalised like we did in Australia. Yay! No penalised this time. We're pit... Oh god, we pit really early. We go. Great, it's great scary animation in the pit in the pit box there. That was our last stop. No more 
Hmm. I don't know whether or not this strategy is going to work out the best for us, but let's find out. Let's find out. Right, we have 15 seconds to Albon, who's a 19th. Total pit time is about 24 seconds, so I mean, we're bound to gain positions. We are on fresh rubber compared to the rest of the field. I mean, we've got that going for us. But whether or not we'll actually be able to catch up, who knows? It is nice to have fresh boots. The uh, front left takes a fucking beating at this track because there's a lot of right-hand corners and a lot of elongated right-hand corners as well. Like turn four, as well as the, uh, the two corners at the top of the second half of the track. Stappen's out. Does so that mean safety car? Safety car would be helpful. We get a safety car right now. We're in a very good Yellow position. Sorry, Max. That being said, I'm fully expecting to take penalties. How's our wear on our uh, arts? Surprisingly, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. However, the control electronics are already at 24%. We're not even through two races. And we only get two of those a season. I'm not trying to get the fastest lap time right now. I'm just trying to be consistent. Consistency is what's going to help us here. Okay, we're going to get a couple of spots here. Oh, you're joking. Crap. <sighs> Will we be fast enough to catch Butler? Let's find out. Do it. That was a unique way of uh, finding our way through turn seven. Gotta keep an eye on the wear on these tires. That's gonna be our downfall. Four tenths up on our fastest lap so far. That'll bring us into the 23s. Looks like we'll probably pit Grosjean as well. Okay, so we've held on to Butler somewhat. Well, we got past Russell. Yes. Perez, you bloody brilliant person. Please hold up Butler.
Please hold Butler up. Gonna get some DRS. Still got Russell behind us, I will say. He's he's hanging on like a champ. He is hanging on like a champ. Oh, if only Williams could see this now. They'd actually be happy that he's running in 12th. Come on, we got to get back in the points. Let me get some DRS. Not that I think it'll help us. Right, we are back in the points now. We're eighth. I did say eighth, didn't I? Right, we're on their tails. We're getting closer. Six is up for grabs. It's a Haas versus a Renault versus a Racing Point. Got to keep it smooth. And risk-free. Good, tell me that later. ARS is hanging on. I'm right behind the both of them. Break is slightly early for the last corner. Shut up, Jeff. Yeah, kind of an iffy exit coming out of the last corner. Actually, I'm going to shut Jeff up. Ah, no one's making any gains. Bugger. <laughs> Why did I do that? Why did I do that? I did not need to do that. <laughs> right, here we go. We're on him. Oh, oh bastard. That was my line. Hold on, let's actually judge whether or not it was actually my line or not. Uh, okay, no, one could argue, no, that wasn't actually my line. Okay, well, we'll go this way then. Oh, I hit the force in here. It's not called the force in here anymore, it's called the racing point. I managed to keep the car though. Oh, this is tense. There was a little bit of contact there, but nothing too damaging to the front wing. What's our tire wear like? Okay, still pretty good. Front rise right in great condition. We got, we're very close. We're going to get a good run down the front straight, I think. Handbrake is slightly early for the last corner. Good exit. Good apex. All right, here we go. DRS. He's going right. I've gone left. 
Alright, I've run deep. No, I haven't. I've got him. And I got DRS to defend. Mr. Tofu, thank you very much for the follow, my friend. Greatly appreciated. Alright. How many catch proofs? We've got three laps. My hands are tensing up. Not gonna worry about Butler, he's we've dealt with him now, he's behind us. My focus is Perez. Six places on the cards, and I'm not giving it up. Three and a bit laps left to go. Right, we're on. DRS. Butler's decent way behind us now. He's outside of DRS of us. Okay, good line through turn one. Good exit out of turn two. We're going to get some more DRS, but we're not close enough this lap. At least not yet to catch Perez. Oh, oh that was a late dive. A little bit of contact. Doesn't really seem fair to end the battle that way. So I could have fought for that, but no, I thought no, let's 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 do it fairly. We've been having a good battle so far. Let's not end it with a little bit of contact and me driving off into the distance. Let's do it properly. But that has allowed Butler to come back into the situation. So we just have to keep an eye on him behind. A little bit of off gas throttle going through the fast right hander there. Good apex there. Alright, we're going to get probably get some good DRS down the front straight. Break a little early for the final corner. So we don't go ramming into the back of him. Right, good exit. DRS. Catching up. Not enough. Not enough. Good exit out of turn two. Right, going to have DRS again going in turn four. Breaking down the inside. Got him. A little bit of a Danny Rick lunge. We're up to six with two laps to go. I don't think we're going to catch Gasly, but now we got to defend the positions. Butler's on Perez's tail, and Perez might suddenly now get a second wind. Oh, he's right there. He's got DRS. I'm going to go to the inside. Okay, managed to block him off this time. Oh, no, he's making a dive. He's not got it. Ah, crap. Um, Alright, let's try and see if we can build out that three second gap to cover the penalty. Let's not. That wasn't fair. Really wasn't fair. I don't remember getting multiple warnings, I'll tell you that. Right, we're gonna get three. We're gonna get three seconds this lap. No way in hell we're gonna do it. We're gonna. F ah, fuck me. Bitch.
quite wide, but... I hope we've got enough gap to actually behind Butler, because... Three seconds. My boy CB Vettel won the race. Right. What? Oh no, we ran out of fuel right on the line. What did we finish? Eighth. Okay. I did say eighth. Eighth was my goal, so we got eighth. Which is a shame, because that was some really good, solid battles with Butler and Perez. Oh my god. Look at Matteo Bonotto's hair. That's a shot to the system. That's... Oh my god, that's a look. Holy crap, that's a look. Oh man. What's next? China. Oh man, that's going to be an interesting race. Yeah, good job, Seb. Even though it's not actually Seb, it's the AI. Let's see what effect this result has had on the driver's standing. Sebastian Vettel will be very happy. So what's? Where are we? I wonder where we're standing in total points. We'll check the points once we get back to the computer. But I, despite the penalty, I'm really happy with that race. That was a good soul race. A lot of fun. Good battles. That's when that's when games like this are at their peak. When it's solid, good battles. The AI is tough, but you are as competitive as the AI. When you are on par with the AI, it makes it so much better. I don't think we got that finished sixth or better, did we? <laughs> okay, hold on a second. I think with a few sweat up... Sweat up... I think with a few setup tweaks, there may have been a little more on the table, but all in all, I've got few complaints. You clearly, you must have more. All right, um, R&D. Okay, let's get... This is just... That's resource points. This is reliability. I just want to keep increasing the reliability of all the new parts, especially since we're going to be doing aerodynamics first. See, that's wrong, because in actual fact, we know this year that the, the Ferrari actually has the better engine. But we are still... Was there any? Okay, so there's been no upgrades by any of the teams so far. That fills me with reassurance. But as soon, a minute, there is a jump by one of the teams. First job, upgrade the car. The minute. One of our competitors, one of our closest. The minute Renault or uh, Racing Point upgrade the car we're doing an upgrade uh hope you're enjoying the stream guys i know i definitely am if you are new here welcome along uh tonight we are continuing on with the rear mode for the brand new f1 2019 got the legends edition here uh we might do a bit more of the center and frost content actually why don't we do some of that now? Why don't we do some of the center and Pros content now? I'm sure some of you out there are interested in what it is. Unfortunately, whilst it is cool to see center and Prost in the game, unfortunately, the center and Prost content is nothing more than just... I put some few invitational challenges. So we'll only do a couple just so I can kind of show you the cars. And then we'll get back to the uh, career. Right, time attack in France. Since it's France. 
And ironically, he has one here. Now, this alienates me. I'll say this. Uh, if you watched French Grand Prix this past weekend, you'll note that there was a new pit lane entry and a new pit lane exit. They have yet to put that in the game. Now, whether or not they will update the game to include that modification or not is yet to be seen. I really hope they do because my OCD makes my OCD flare up like a bitch. Um, but yeah. Right. I. By the way, this car, one of my favorite F1 cars of all time. I love this car. Oh, bloody hell. So as you can see, Senna is also on the track with us. So basically, you just have to complete three laps in the time. Obviously, if you pass Senna, bonus. Of course, this version of the Ferrari never raced on the long version of Paul Ricard. It would have raced on the short version of Paul Ricard, which comes out just there on our right. Breaking 100 meters for the chicane. Ride the curb. Car very twitchy. And a lot more easier to spin than the modern cars. Not as easy of a flat as in the modern cars. And this, this corner a lot more difficult as well. Of course, when the cars, when these cars were racing on this track, there was a little chicane just before this corner here. Of course, now the track very different from when they used to race here in the 90s. Three and a half seconds behind the legend himself. That's right, running a little wide there. I don't think we'll be able to get away with that when we get to the French Grand Prix in Carrere, but that's all right. I mean, the driver's running that wide in the race over the weekend, so I mean, hey, I don't think anyone's going to bat an eyelid. Breaking just past 100 meters. <laughs> Actually, that curve is very much like the type of curves they would have had back in the 90s, where as soon as you hit it, the car just launches up into the air. get a little bit wider this time to get through that corner flat this time coming up to the McLaren beautiful car beautiful 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 car that legendary helmet in the cockpit of course he actually has to take his hand off the wheel to change gear this Ferrari one of the first Formula One cars to operate a flat paddle gearbox Ferrari revolutionized the technology, for those of you who are not aware of... A hey, come... Japan 89, anybody? <laughs> there, there's something slightly ironic to that collision. Senna just... You know, one of them just turning in on each other. say for the fact even though the race was really boring this past weekend i love this track this track is a great circuit to drive i do very much enjoy driving this circuit it's a lot of fun one of my favorites on the f1 calendar and i'm really glad that they uh brought it back 
Marino, thank you very much for the follow, my friend. Coming out of the chicane. Very nice. A little bit of wheel spin. Flat out. We'll say, despite the fact that these cars not to the level of the current F1 cars, they had a lot of downforce. They had a lot of downforce. You know, these cars easier to drive than the F2 cars, which you would think is, you know, unlikely considering the F2 cars are, you know, 18 years younger than this car. Oh, shit. Get to the line. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. Ding! Three seconds left to go. Not an issue. Not an issue. Alright, now let's drive the McLaren as the legend himself. In my opinion, the greatest driver of all time in any form of motorsport category. Get in center. I remember going and seeing the Senna movie when I was in high school. I think I was... Would have been... Uh, when, did, when did the Senna movie come out? Senna movie came out in... Was it really 2010? No. Can't have been 2010. I didn't see it in 2010. Oh, 2011. So yeah, I would have seen it in my first year of high school. And I loved it. You know, I loved it. I loved the movie. All right. The McLaren. Great car, but... Not gonna lie, I do prefer the Ferrari. Which is funny, because actually my favorite looking F1 car of all time is the 1985 McLaren. I love that car. I love the look of that car. That's my favorite F1 car of all time, is 985 McLaren. I think it's the MP4-2? Yeah, I think it's the MP4-2. All right, got to do roughly about another four, three or four laps. Again, a lot of downforce for a car that is 18, 19 years old now. A lot of downforce. And I mean, look how simple the wing is. Realistically, that front wing is producing pittance of downforce. A lot of the downforce on these cars came from the fact they ran them so goddamn low. I mean, if we look at this, look how low they're running this car. You know, if the teams ran the cars that low these days, they would rip up the tarmac. If they were going as fast as they currently were and were as low as what these cars were, they would actually be ripping up the tarmac. They would have to re... Whoa, what the... The car just completely freaked out. That was bizarre. I thought we'd broken the gearbox. Because we're stuck in fifth and just was stuck in the overrun on fifth. Here comes. Here we go. It's another pro center battle. Side by side. And Cena is passing Prost. 
my terrible Murray Walker impression. And he's got him, he's got him. Cena has passed Prost. Right, we gotta do roughly about another lap in a bit. Get the target. And just a little lift off, and that car will go nearly flat through that corner, which is unbelievable. I bet you if I did that in the F2 car, it would not work. It's amazing. I've wanted F2 in the, in the F1 games for years, and now that it's in here, I'm shitting on the handling of the cars. It's quite funny. I'm sure once I get used to the F2 cars, it'll be fine. Like, outside of the stream I'm, I'm currently running in uh, the championship mode, I'm running the F full F2 season. Uh, I'm running in the ART of Jack Aitken. Did the first two races at Bahrain, the feature race and the sprint race. And I did enjoy it. It was a lot of fun. It was a challenge. Um, I was really surprised. You know, we think... You know, you, you know, F1 fans thought the 2011 Pirellis wore quickly. Holy crap, the F2 tires. I, I had not even set a qualifying lap on a set of soft tires, and they had already worn 35%. 35%. It was nuts. The tires should not have worn out that much. I didn't even get to set the qualifying lap. I did two outlaps, and that's it. All right, so that, that kind of gives you a taste of the Senna Prost content. As I said, not the greatest. It's just invitational stuff. I suppose the use for these cars will probably really come in multiplayer. Um, but yeah, I... I uh, I really wish it was a little better. Of course, the other two new classic cars uh, for this for this year are the 2010 Ferrari, the F10, once it loads. Any time now. There we go. Yeah, so you got the 2010 Ferrari, which I just love this car. Uh, the 2010 Ferrari is one of my favorite, again, one of my favorite F1 cars of all time. I love this car. Um, Fernando Alonso, Felipe Massa, love it. And then, of course, the 2010 McLaren to go along with the 2010 Red Bull. So you got three of the 2010 Formula 1 cars. So why don't we do a quick race in one of them, and then we will get back to the career. I know I, said we do, I, know I said we're only really doing Center Prost content, but those are some other classic cars that I'm sure people have been wanting to see, so let's jump into those. Um, let's do it on a track that would have been on the calendar back then. Uh, let us do... <laughs> yeah, let's let, let us... Let's do Australia. I like Australia. All right, uh, we will do five laps, no qualifying. We'll do spec, uh, and we will stick it on. Uh, we'll stick it on 90, because I found with these spec races in the past, they're actually not that fun. Turn down the vehicle damage, so we're not losing our front wing all the time. Flare, midday. Beautiful, right, let's go. I have driven this car. It's beautiful. Last time I drove this car, I was uh, when I booted up GT5 uh, about a month ago. Um, you know, back in the days when GT5 had official Ferrari Formula 1 cars. Ironically, both the F1 cars that Gran Turismo 5 had are now in this game. So, probably now never need to go back and play GT5 ever again. Because now I can just play this. And still drive those cars. That being said, it is fun to drive. You, should have some space going into the first you know corner. these cars. Um, it is fun to drive these cars.
on like Gran Turismo original circuits like Deep Forest. All right. Heck, I even look like Alonso. Right. Ah, that engine note. Here we go. Decent start. Oh. Keep it clean. All right, off we go. Five laps, Albert Park, 2010 Ferraris. What could possibly go wrong? Ooh. That could go wrong if I spin the car out in turn five. It's just a cacophony of noise. V8 high pitch squeal noise. Ironically, these cars have more downforce than the 2019 cars, which is hilarious. These cars grip a lot better as well. They are far more snappy, provided that I don't spin the car out. Brakes are a lot better. I've been saying for years, you want to fix Formula 1, you go back to the 2010 or 2012 regulations. You will fix F1. The racing was tight. It was close. You had like three or four teams capable of winning races. Not one. You know, look at 2010. You had five drivers in contention for the World Championship. Five. I don't think there was any year in history... Apart from maybe the 50s when there were five drivers in contention for the title. That was quite wide. Do it. Snap of oversteer. Oh, God. Got a snap of oversteer right in the middle of the corner. Let's just watch the replay. Right in the middle of the corner. Snap oversteer. Right there. See, also, what's interesting is I'm used to driving this car in F1 2010 with the F1 2010 physics model, which is obviously a massive... Oh, God, got it. Oh, that could have ended terribly. Now, of course, the F1 2010 physics model, uh, not as not renowned not necessarily known for its most realistic portrayal of formula one uh physics but i still like it i still go back and play it every once in a while actually oh, boy. tell you what man driving these classic cars tough Could have had the fast lap there if I didn't screw up sector three. Oh, Jesus. Speaking of screwing up sector three, nearly screwed up turn one. Oh, oh, God. Of course, the wood plank goes over that sausage curb and just rides it like a surfboard. Snap oversteer again. I 
Come on, we've got to catch Roth. Terrible name for a driver. I wish there was manual F duct. I wish we could do manual F duct in this car. Because, of course, back in 2010, there was the F duct. That exists, or existed. Oh shit, missed the braking! <laughs> I totally missed up, I totally skipped the braking point. I was too busy focused on the back of the car in front and talking to you guys, I totally missed the braking point. That should have exploded the car in real life. That's, uh, you know, Nico Hulkenberg, oh. Are you okay? that was a big I hate turn five. I hate turn five. I will finish this race if it kills me. And then we can back, get back to Korea where I can actually drive the cars with some level of skill. Right, right in the back of Roth and Clark. Now. Just just imagine that my ha my uh, left hand's off the steering wheel and utilizing the F-duct. Especially down this straight here. And they're side by side. A good run out of 16. They might be able to get them both. Ooh, snap over step right in the middle of 16. I got the slipstream. Here we go. I was quite happy to back out of that. Somehow they managed to go two by two into turn one. And break. <laughs> Clark lost out to Roth in that little skirmish. We're right on the back of them. Oh, for God's sake! Are you all right? Engine off. Engine off. <sighs> Let's pretend none of these flashbacks happened. I think after all these laps I'd realize don't take turn five flat just back off the throttle slightly and you'll make it through but no oh speaking of slightly that wasn't slightly at all Boom. Jesus Christ. Green flag. Green flag. Fuck it, I'm not using any more flashbacks. Can I can I do one race without getting a time penalty? Oh, I'm so glad we're going back to career mode after this. Holy crap, am I glad we're going back to career mode after this. Well, I just embarrassed myself. Something wicked. Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. Yeah, right. We're going back to career mode, so I don't embarrass myself anymore. Idy, idy, idy. Right. <sighs> 
For some reason, the servers aren't working. I'm not 100% sure why. I had a sneaky suspicion of what it had to do with the fact that I was streaming the game. Because the game technically, I mean, for most people, isn't out yet. If you're like me and you're a sucker and you pay the extra money to get the Legends Edition for, you know, then... But I don't, I don't actually know. They didn't actually... I'm assuming the server's alive. They didn't actually mention that. They never actually mentioned... I know they said three days early access, but they never actually mentioned whether or not the servers would go live. You'd have to assume that they would, right? I think it's probably safe to say the servers have gone live. Well, yeah, they had to have been because it was working this morning and it's not, it was, it's not working now. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Speculation. It's all speculation. Right, now, let's just check to see if any of our teams did an upgrade. Oh, they did. Right. We got to do an upgrade. I didn't upgrade this race. Both Renault and Force, not Force India, Renault and Racing Point both had upgrades. So we need to get an upgrade for this race. Or at least get enough points to get an upgrade for this race. Welcome to Shanghai. That's great. All right, session info. All right, our setup. All right, we're going to up the front wing. Go with our usual camber settings. Usual front suspension settings. Two, three. Brake pressure at 85. Brake bias at uh, 62. Okay, here's something to remember about this circuit. Be careful of the double left hander at turns 9 and 10. You know what I want to be careful of, Jeff? You shutting up. It's really annoying you can't pick your engineer's voice. That would be so lovely. Jesus Christ. That suspension, man, is nuts. You must be running a really low height, road height for this circuit. It's going that crazy. Alright, here we go. Good lord, the back of the car is bouncing around like a bitch. Good grip, though. Very good grip. Really good grip. The car might be bouncing around a lot, but holy crap, the grip's good. That feels very hooked up. Very hooked up. The only change I might make is just to up the ride height. Oh, that's a bumpy boy. Brakes working well. Brakes working very well. That is a very bumpy boy. That's fantastic. As soon as you go on the straight. I don't know how well it's coming across on the feed, but my control is just going. What's this? What's the suspension at? That's funny because it's on quite soft suspension. I'm 
might up the rear ride height a little bit, run quite a high rake. And just see if that fixes it. It's holy crap. Those of you uh, who are wondering what the hell a high rake means, basically what it means is that... Thanks, Jeff. What a high rate means is that the front ride height is quite low and the rear ride height is quite big. So it looks like the car is kind of like a wedge shape. Red Bull run quite a high rake. And it doesn't necessarily... It doesn't necessarily increase the rear downforce. If anything, it probably makes it worse. But anything to kind of get rid of the bumpiness at the back, but... Eh, sort of has... Oh, no, it's not really fixed it. Okay, we might go... If it hasn't really fixed anything, we might just go back to it and just have to deal with the bumps. Because, I mean, it's only a problem down the straights. And it wasn't that... Oh, yeah, our rear downforce is... Our downforce overall is kind of taking a bit of a hit. Um, it's only really bad at the end of the straights. It's not so bad around the corners. The cor uh, Through the corners, the grip is actually fantastic. have to break i remember back when i was playing f1 2012 2013 you could break it about 70 80 meters for that corner now you have to break the 100 meter board have to break at the 100 meter board you're going too fast acceleration on of these current cars is nuts i suppose also the extra weight as well that probably explains why you have to break What's interesting is I used to run setups from a website called f1carsetups.com or something for all the F1 games. Now I just do my own. And honestly, since doing my own, the car has felt pretty much fantastic the entire time. Because the thing is, everyone's different. Everyone's going to have a certain way they drive. And for me, the way the cars handle with the setups that I run is fan bloody -tastic. Tire wear's not that bad, only 3.99% on that lap. Which is good, considering the amount of strain that the uh, front tires go through, especially through the high-speed corners. Especially the front left. There's two really high-speed right-handers. But the front left is really... Actually, there's about three. So the front left is put through a lot of strain. Good set of corners, but we've lost quite a bit of time actually through that middle sector. Ooh, was just holding on to the outside of the corner there. Time to go uh, through the trampoline. Look at that rear suspension. Oh my god, look at the amount of sparks coming out of the front of the car. Actually, it could even be the ride height as a whole, not just the... Might be the ride height as a whole, not just the rear ride height. But to be brutally honest, I'd much rather... It's not going to really do anything. I'd much rather just... Put the ride height back as it was. This Ferrari's going to get in my way. Come on, Charles, get out the way. I'm on a lap. Thank you.
Beautiful. All right, that was actually very good. That's very good. A little bit of off throttle there. Close to flat. Really flat through the left hander of that double left hand kink. Curb on the inside to get a good entry for whatever turn that is. I think it's turn 10. Beautiful run onto the back straight. Again, time to do the trampoline. TRS. Oop, a little wide there, but that's all right. 1.3 seconds faster than the target time. All right, let's see how the tire wear was. In Bahrain, it was not great. Here, just under par. Just under par. Slightly. It's 1.01. .01. Okay, let us do Urs management. Oh, I didn't change the rear ride height. Need to remember to change the rear ride height after this run. Oh, here comes Webber. Let him go. I'm not in the mood for a scrap. Let's go. Science and a Ferrari behind me. It's probably Leclerc. We've got a good amount of space to the racing point in front of us. Nice little... Still got a little bit of shine on the front tyres. But they're still quite fresh. I wonder if the clue's on a lap or not. If he's on a lap, then he might try to overtake us. If he's not on a lap, then he might hang back. Yeah, I reckon we need to put that ride height down again, because I reckon the, the lower the ride height is, the more downforce we're going to get. So... Wow, he's right on our tail. I'll probably go zooming past down the back straight anyway, so it probably won't matter. Bye bye, Ferrari. I'm not. Uh, yeah, we'll put the DRS on. Oh, and he's gone. Not even a contest, just gone. Can I race him? No, he's got much better drive off the corners than what I do. DRS. Boom. Beautiful. Right. We will head to FP2, do the qualifying sim. Oh, and raise the goddamn ride height. Where is it? Or lower, I should say. Beautiful. Right, let's go to FP2. With all the cars now over the line, let's see our top three again. Hamilton, Vettel, and Charles Leclerc. And that's it. Practice is officially over. Uh, hope you're enjoying the stream, guys. If you're just joining us, welcome along. Tonight we are continuing on with our F1 2019 career mode. I say continuing on because we did a stream earlier in the day doing Australia and F2. And so far we've done Bahrain. We've done a little bit of the Senna Prost content. We've done a race in one of the other new classic cars, the 2010 Ferrari, and now we are doing China in the career mode. If you are new here, guys, consider following, also even subscribing, but just being here is much appreciated. And if you're a returning viewer, make sure you do share the channel, guys. That is greatly appreciated as well. 
Right. How many resource points? Oh, we don't have enough for an upgrade. Right. That's fine. I'm. I'm. I can take that. I'm, that's fine. Start again. I might take my jacket off. It's quite hot. It's quite warm. Bye bye. All right. Qualifying pace. Qualifying. Right. I'd be curious to see because I'm quite China, Australia, good at. But obviously my performance in the 2010 Ferrari notwithstanding. Australia is a track I'm good at. Bahrain, not so much. China, another track I'm pretty decent at. So it'll be interesting to see what my qualifying pace is going to be like. Also, I'm going to stick that onto overtake rather than hot lap. Hot lap drains way too much ERS. Good run out of turn two. Funny, fast set to one, lost literally all the time I made. Oh, bugger. Oh, we don't want to see what happens. Those. Great, great graphics on the breaking board signs. Right, good run out of there. Five tenths up. Fast sector two, which is oh yeah, that's definitely fast sector. We're half a second up. I'll agree with that statement. We apply the throttle round for the sweeping right hander onto the back straight, coming up to the second DRS zone. Half a second up on the time. Oh, lost a lot of time coming out of that. Uh, Snuffy says, uh, how much percentage differ you on? I think I'm at 70%. Seventy-five. Seventy-five on the off-throttle and off-throttle. But that works for me. I don't want to... I've, I've tried... What did I try running once? I think I was... I think I tried running 80% on the on throttle. And the car was so slow coming out of the corner. I it honestly felt like every time I came out of a hairpin, the car had no drive. It was so bad. And that was the on throttle diff. Oh, apologies. There's nothing you meant difficulty. A hundred. A hundred percent out of a hundred and ten. But there you go. You got a little technical speak as well. So yeah, no. A hundred percent out of a hundred and ten. What I'm running. Utilize the aerodynamic braking rather than the brakes. Tell you what, the aerodynamic braking is so much better in this game than in last year's game. 
you can actually lift in coast. And not really lose out. Not that there's really a lot of opportunities lifting coast on the circuit. You got turn one, turn four. The hairpin at the end of the back straight. And then maybe going into the final turn, you can do lifting coast at this track. But apart from that, not really. Uh, Stuffy says, I pay, I play, not pay. I play on 100 to 105, but with a wheel. Yeah, no, unfortunately, I'm too cheap for a wheel. I also spend way too much money on other games to buy a wheel. I'm a sort of a part-time game collector, so most of my money goes to that. But um, yeah, no, I... I play, at the moment I'm playing on 100, so, which is funny, last year's game, I run it on about 80 or 90, I put it on 90 for this year's game, straight away thinking, oh, okay, that's probably a good position to, you know, where, that's probably pace-wise where I'll be, gotten to qualify, gotten to, like, qualifying, a Q1 or something, and was like first in a Haas on 90, and I was like, no. I want a challenge. I do not want to cakewalk this. I didn't, if I wanted to cakewalk this, I would have gone into the Mercedes or the Ferrari. I want to build up the car. I want to build up the team. I want a challenge for the championships with the Haas, not with just going straight into a top team. So I stuck it up to 100. So far, it's been perfect. But who knows? I might stick it up higher. I'd imagine once I get to the Ferrari, maybe I might have to stick it up to even as high as 110. I may have to go to as high as 110. But yeah, no. Whether, you know, whether or not you guys consider it skillful that I play at 100 with a controller or not, I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised if the game, like even though I'm playing on 100, because I'm playing with medium traction control and with anti-lock brakes, I would not be surprised if I turn those off completely. Well, obviously it's going to be instantaneously more difficult because I'd lock the brakes and spin the car. Um, but yeah. Uh, we want to go. We want to go out. Uh, Snuffy says you're so fast with the controller. Well done. Thank you very much. Well, it comes from a very a lot of years of playing racing games. A lot of years of playing racing games and not really playing with a wheel for any of them. Most racing games I've ever played has been with a controller, so. And racing games are my forte, so. My friends refuse to play racing games with me because they are always like, you always win, we don't have a chance. Also, the fact that I've had real-life racing experience probably helps as well. Alright. Good run out of turn two. Uh, Snuffy says you stream racing games. Uh, I stream a little bit of everything, but at least for this week, uh, we're going to be streaming F1 2019 for this week, but uh, also on Thursday we'll be streaming the new GT Sport update that's coming out, and that looks to be a chocker block of an update with a new track, new cars, and wet weather conditions. So that's going to be really cool. Um, so look out for that. But yeah, I'm 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 a bit of everything. So I stream um, I stream racing games, I stream uh, PC games, I stream other console games. Last week we were streaming Planet Coaster. Probably get streaming. We'll probably get back to Planet Coaster next week because I promised a six-part series and we've only done like three or four parts. So, yeah. Uh, Marino says, "Do you have uh, any controller configuration, or do you just use the default one? Just use the default one. I don't really. I mean, I really only use very few buttons. So, and I mean the default one works for me, but then again, I'm just used to it at this point. So." 
And we've run out of Urs right coming up to the last corner. So that's probably... Yep. Look at that. Two seconds off because we lost our ERS right at the end. You lose the Urs right at the end. Fucking power hits the ground. All right, we'll accelerate a little bit and then get back out on the track now. And we'll go down on the um, Urs deployment. She'll go low for the moment until we get to the start of the lap. Right. Take two, and hopefully we're not 14th by the end of it. So far, not so good. Two tenths down on our best lap. I imagine we're going to make up a lot of time in the last sector. Oh my god. Okay, we cannot... Oh my god, we cannot do a run on these tyres. These tyres are fucked. I should have swapped to a new pair of tyres. Should have swapped to a new pair of tyres. Nope, don't accelerate. Time. Get out. Get out of the garage and fucking push. All right, for the moment I got clear track. I hope it stays that way. Right, here we go. Fresh tires, clear track, I hope. Clear track. Right, tenth and a half up. Right, three tenths up. Right, five tenths up. Now we're going to start to make some of this time back that we lost. Or not. <sighs> Seventh. Ninth. Okay, not terrible. Not terrible. Not where I want to be. But not terrible. This is better than that first lap. That first lap was rubbish the problem is we're running out of ARS right at the end of the lap 
with all these straights, we're running out of ERS right as we get to the end of the lap, so... I really hope I've got a fresh set of tires for... for, um, Q3. All right, let's get out of the pits. Get clear track. That's not what I call clear track. Back off. Straight to low. All right. Here we go. Okay, good turn one. Hitting the apex, very nice. Turn two, right in the curbs. Beautiful exit. Breaking into turn four. Good, nice exit. Smooth, keeping it clean. That's exactly what we need. All right, little lift off here through turn five and six. Not the best position for the double left-hander, but that's okay. Eight tenths off the feather. Pretty decent. No! Oh, no. Okay, we have to try that again. Nah. Ah! It's all starting to come apart. Not what we need. There we go. There we go. Right, power. On it. Just keep an eye on the ERS deployment. Alright, we're going to knock it down a little bit for this last part of the lap. Time is 35 dead. Will that be enough? I don't know, and I don't think it will be. But there's no point in me going out again. Because I don't have the tyres. You yeah, might be getting knocked out here. That was lucky. Oh my god, Bottas got knocked out. Wow, okay. I thought Bottas would have shot up right at the end. Okay, that was lucky. I did not think that was... In all fairness, that was a rubbish lap. We were wide at the hairpin. Couldn't get the fast bank sweeper right going onto the back straight. A shame because the start of that lap was fucking fantastic. Right, have we got? Oh, thank God. <laughs> Fresh set of softs. Thank you. We need the space. Have we got space to back off? Yes, we do. Right, correct space. We've got a Mercedes coming up behind us. Can't back off too much. All right. Huh, Hamilton. Oh, I so want to impede his lap.
That was an interesting start to the lap. Oh crap, this is going to impede my lap more than it's going to impede his. Oh, or I could take Hamilton out. Did I fully take him out or what happened? Can I just say, that was just dumb and stupid and a dick move to make. Problem is, we only got one attempt at this. We don't even have two. We have one. And our attempt's been ruined by an idiot who thinks that going on the inside of us, whilst we're doing a hot lap, whilst he's on his hot lap, is the right way to go about it. Is there any chance we had to have a decent starting position? It's just gone. Two seconds off the pace. And we can't do another lap. King hell. We got no tire. We've got them recommended for Q2. Thank you. Heard Lewis Hamilton 10 seconds off. Hope he stays that way. Ninth. Uh, no, eighth. Not ninth. Okay, not terrible. I thought that was going to be worse. So we're, in a, we're in a decent position for the race. Are you a sucker for realism? Why don't you turn on the simulation damage? I would if, uh, a, like, literally a touch by a feather duster didn't knock off half my front wing. We, I ran simulation damage in the Australia race. I flash back so much because all I had to do was literally blow on the front wing and it would come apart. You know, it's more fragile than a piece of fine china. Which, by the way, you drop a piece of fine china in a store, it breaks. I doubt if I just picked up a Formula One front wing and just dropped it on the ground, might get a few scuffs, I doubt it would break apart like that. They're made out of carbon fucking fiber. Not glass. Speaking of which, we need to do an R&D upgrade. What's that? The halo. Oh wow, so you can do halo upgrades now. Hmm. And it contributes to the rear downforce of all things. Tertiary wing flaps. You can't have those, they're illegal. Secondary, you can't have them. They're illegal. Illegal. Unless you're talking about like the um the third pl uh, the third um fuck, what's it called? You know what I'm trying to say, right? I'm gonna modify. I'm gonna upgrade the halo. <laughs> Why not? All right, that will bring us hopefully into line with the other teams at the next race. He says, not actually being sure if it'll make a damn bit of fucking difference. All right. It's time to find out which driver is up to the task of claiming the Chinese Grand Prix. Before we begin, let's... well, I would love to say it would be me, but we're not in a competitive car yet to take wins. I remember when I was <laughs> I know what you can do. Don't let me When I played F1 2017, I did the I did the career in the McLaren. And I think there was a patch. I got to the sec halfway through the second season and I'd upgraded the car quite a bit, and I was really surprised because the engine didn't really seem like even though I was improving the engine it didn't really seem like a lot was happening on the engine front. 
So then an update came out which patched this bug of um which patched this bug which essentially just made the Honda engine effectively incredibly OP and after that update the next race I won. You know, so I'm kind of half expecting when they do the first update to do the performance, you know, updates to bring the cars in line with their real life counterparts, I wouldn't be surprised if the Haas just suddenly jumps up. Especially in engine performance. Maybe not in chassis and downforce performance. They're actually kind of shit in the real world at the moment. Ooh, that was wide. That's a decent start. Good job. Yeah, decent start until we ran completely wide behind in the dirty era of Vettel's Ferrari. Right, get out of hot lap and get into high. Alright, we got 14 laps and we're in 7th. Who's... The Renault of Butler, right, he will fall back. Oh, crap. Oh, and here comes Bottas. I completely forgot that he was completely out of position. Up the inside of Perez. And... I think I got tapped on the rear. car's not gripping as it was. Oh, that might explain it. That's a lot of tyre wear. That's a lot of tyre wear. God, when I'm in a hot lap, I must fuck my tyres up so badly for them to get 30% of damage from literally two laps. A hot lap and a couple of cooldown uh, A warm-up lap, a hot lap, and a cooldown lap and my tires are fucked. The C130 versus the Mercedes Benz. Uh, Belsky says you started on used tires. Oh yeah, I'm well aware. Well, 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 well aware I started on used tires. I'm just going to let Bottas go. No way in hell I'm going to be able to fight him. I'm fully aware I started on used tires, but it just amazes me that a hot lap in Q2, a warm-up lap and a cool-down lap is enough to cause 35% odd wear on the tires. McLaren's going to get me. Try not to slam into the back of him. Also try to control the rear of the car. Fuck. Oh, wow. We're, okay, we're coming in really early then. I'm going to pop down the inside here. Please and thank you. Or you can push me off. That was a little archy barchy. That's front. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to flashback that. Uh, Belsky says I had the same issue uh, in 2018, to be frank. Or to be fair. Yeah. I didn't really have that issue in 2018. I, in 2018, I was actually surprised. The tires hardly wore out. This, this year, they seem to have made them very. But then again, the tire compounds did change from this year, from last year. So maybe, maybe I'm just really harder on this new construct of tyre than I was last year. Construct, which actually makes sense because a lot of the teams have been, in real life have been complaining that they're a lot harder on their tyres this year than what they were last year. So I mean, yes, I know Jeff, shut up. All right, we're going to get some DRS on Perez. But I doubt we'll be able to get him. Oh, okay, we managed to hold through that pretty Nicely. We need to lower my ERS. It's Perez versus Science. Looks like Perez lost. Reduce the 
Yes, I know, Jeff. What do you think I've just done? Right, so, hopefully this ends up a little bit like Bahrain, where this ends up benefiting us. Right, off we go. 2.3 seconds, not terrible. Not terrible at all. Okay, so we got about 4% of where we're at. We got 11 laps to go. So by the end of the race, we're going to have roughly about 44% worth of wear, which actually is quite good. It'll be about the same as we had just then. So that'll probably put us around about the same position as we were. And of course, in race pace, we'll be a lot easier on our tyres. Right, so a couple laps of clear air. Oh, or that could throw the spanner in the works. Rain is on the horizon. Had I known that, I would have qualified in Q2 on the mediums. Or at least tried to. Grosjean and Giovinazzi clearly having a fight up ahead. With Kubica on the back of that train. Of course we can't see it because we are about 15 seconds behind everybody in front. Three percent tie with that lap. Very good. Oh yeah, we're gonna eclipse a lot of these guys in the pit stops. A lot of them. Fresh tires. Catching up by a little bit. Grosjean's fallen back behind Kubica. Holy crap. Kubitz has overtaken somebody. Quick. Somebody call Autosport and tell them. Right, cars are going in the pits. Gonna be our opportunity to get some positions back. I've had two laps on fresher tyres, so hopefully that's made a decent bit of difference. And we're going to come out ahead of quite a few cars here. Ah, we've clipped Perez. Beautiful. So the undercut works. We've got past both Perez and Sainz. Thanks to the undercut for fresh tyres. Coming in a couple laps earlier than them. Has worked a treat. And the good news is, is that we haven't really worn the tires out a lot. We're just going to keep it clean for the rest of the race. Overtake some cars ahead the pit stop phase and then if we can we'll end up in a good position DRS is broken DRS has failed DRS 
the IRS has completely failed. Brilliant. Not that we need it, but not exactly helpful either. Hello. What are we up to? Eighth. The car ahead is coming to fit the mediums. Car ahead, now running medium tires. God, Butler has made a lot of ground. I don't know if we'll be able to catch him, but we'll definitely try. Okay, that was actually kind of a pointless bit of information because I, what I actually wanted to know was <laughs> what the gap was and what it is now. Alright, 1.7 though is what it was. 2.1. So, gain three tenths, three four tenths. That is good news. Actually, the problem is. The RS is offline. The rear wing is down, so you can stay out while we work on a fix. Only took you a lap to tell me. Our DRS has failed, and we're catching up to Butler. Uh, we ain't going to have a way of being able to overtake him. Provided we end up overtaking him on a straight. How's tire we're looking? 15%. Hashtag field spread. Okay, gap between me and Perez is maintaining at about two seconds a lap. That's still working really well, it's gripping. Belsky, thank you very much for the follow, my friend. Much appreciated. Alright, what's the time to Butler? Butler ahead. Okay, gap ahead is 3.4 seconds. They're on fresh mediums. Their tyres are one lap old. The time last lap was a 156.1. Why do I... Why do I do that? <laughs> Check it again once we finish the slap. Alright, here we go. 38 9. Butler is ahead of you. Gap to car in front is 4.0 seconds. They're on fresh mediums. Their tyres are two laps old. The time last lap was a 1 minute 37.8. Yeah. And we did a 38 9. Yeah, we ain't, we ain't chasing Butler down. We're kind of stuck in no man's land at the moment because Perez isn't catching us. And we're not catching Butler. We're losing time to him. So what we have to hope for now is that that rain plays a role. Maybe some drivers pit for inters. We stay out on the dries and manage to go to the end of the race. Potentially. Can you give me something else to do, please, rather than harvest energy? I kind of don't want to right now. How's my broken DRS? Oh, fixed! Again, Jeff, great engineer. Waits a lap to tell me the, ER the DRS is broken, and now hasn't even told me it's fixed.
expecting some rain soon. Expect the first drops in the next few minutes. Five laps left to go. Let's see how much the rain plays a part in the race. If it plays a part, my goal or my objective is if the rain gets to the point where the other driver's pit for enters, I'm going to try and stay out. Oh, that was a drop. Oh, yeah, it's starting to rain off the halo now. Hopefully the others will pit for inters. I'll stay out on dries for as long as I possibly can. And then try and gain advantage that way. The gap to the car ahead is 4.9 seconds. However, that being said... No, it's actually more risk. It's more riskier to actually go in early and take the risk rather than go in late. The Fiat's out. Actually, if that brings out the safety car, that might save our bacon. That'll get us behind Butler. Admittedly, I'm not really driving as flat out as I could. I'm driving a little bit conservatively because I just know that I've got to keep the tyres alive, so I'm not pushing as hard as I probably could be. Kind of driving a little bit more conservatively just to save the tyres a little bit. Rain's really starting to come down now. About three seeing gap to Perez behind, so we are. We have gained time on Perez, which is good. Coming up to the Toro Rossov Cafe, it will be up here on the left. Five seconds to Butler, holy crap. Oh, that was a bad line. That was a bad line through there. Second race in a row, we might finish eighth. Actually, where did we finish in Australia? No, Australia finished tenth because of that fucking time penalty we got for the fucking pit lane speeding bug. Okay, the grip's slowly starting to go. It's not fully gone yet. Reduce the ERS deployment, please. We need to charge the battery. Shut up, Jeff. The further we go on, the less likely the guys in front are going to switch to inters. Which means my plan of hoping to stick it out and stay on dries may never end up coming to fruition. Okay, we gained four tenths on him. I'd hardly say we're catching him. Four tenths is not four seconds. Oh, God. Rise.
Yes, drives are the fastest tire, says the guy who uh, isn't experiencing the fact the braking distances have just completely gone to hell. Why is there a yellow flag behind us? Someone's pulling off. Ah, Danny Rick. The grip is gone. We are so much slower now. Oh. But we're five seconds a lap slower at the moment. Six seconds a lap slower because of the rain. Engine trying to decide whether or not it wants to be an overrun or not. Alright, no one's pitting for inters. They're going right to the end. Oh, no grip. No grip. Eleven point three seconds slower because of the rain. I can't even put the I can't even put the gas on completely in the corners. The rear wheels just spin. And there's me going wide. Okay, the stewards have now disabled DRS. DRS is now disabled. I will say this has helped me build out a gap to Perez and quite a significant one at that. So there has been some positives. Have slightly caught up to Butler, but probably running wide at the hairpin just before didn't help. Car can't go full on the power without wanting to completely go from underneath me. Thank God we're on the last lap. My hand is cramping up. Again, running wide because of the wet. Rear tires are still spinning. Oh man, that was tough. That was tough. Oh. Oh yeah, don't worry about the fact that. I've just had to wrestle the car around for like four or five laps in the rain on dries with no grip. I tell you what, that is... I hope they show Matteo Bonotto that likeness of him because even he must think, holy shit. It doesn't even look anything like him. They haven't got his hair right, his glasses right. Yeah, looks so easy. <sighs> that was tense, guys. I'm not gonna lie, that was not fun. First half of the race was great. Second half, on the other hand, slicks on wet. Oh, 
like being on a fucking ice rink with... It actually, honestly, it just feels like being in a car with no brakes. Really. Because you have to brake so early. Sebastian Vettel will be very happy with that result as he extends his championship lead. <sighs> right. Well. Jeez, uh, nearly 10 o'clock for me. Holy crap. All right, guys. We are going to wrap. Oh, we'll do the media interview. See what she has to say. That was a good race for Lucas. Are you pleased to see him doing well? Sure. Oh. That race put you ahead of your old F2 teammate in the championship. How competitive are the two of you? You and Devon weren't far apart by the end of the race. How evenly matched are you? Um, let's go with that one. I tried to be diplomatic. It's the start of the season. How do you think things are going to go for you? Um. Yeah. Appreciate your time. I will say that they've improved a lot with this game. I'll, I'll, I'll give some thoughts about this game now that I've done a couple streams with it and uh, now that we've had a little bit of it. Uh, of, of now that I've had my hands on the game for a little bit of time. That's what I'll say about it. It is a... It is an improvement over 2018. They've done a lot of really cool things. Um... I would say I'm enjoying my time so far already with this, with the racing and the career mode far more. Despite the fact I've bitched now for quite a bit about F2, I really am glad that they've included it. It's a new challenge and I like, you know, the fact. I wish, however, that they did a full F2 season before F1. But that's just personal opinion. Visually, it's had an improvement. Handling's had an improvement. Um, the cars, you know, are probably a lot easier to hook up now. But then I suppose that's also come from just my experience in setting up the cars. Um, I'm a lot better experienced now, having had a couple years at trying to set up the cars. So that's really helped going into this and it's good that kind of the mid pack is so evenly matched you get some great races and these past three races have been some great race you know we've had some great races china was probably the weakest but still we've had bahrain was great australia was great so we've had some really really strong races um my gripes the pro center content is it worth three days early access is it worth that little bit extra for me, I'm glad that they included the cars. I'm glad that they included their likenesses. I'm glad that they included what they did, but I'm a little disappointed that, you know, there isn't more to the cross center content than what there is. But that's just personal opinion. Um, you guys may really enjoy it. I really like the fact they've added those two cars. I really like the fact they've added the two 2010 cars as well, the McLaren and the Ferrari. Um, and I really love the 90, the 90, uh, 90, Ferrari. I do like that a lot. So, Overall, I would say it's a really good improvement. Um, I haven't touched the multiplayer yet. I haven't touched the car, the, the multiplayer specific car, because um, servers won't log me in. Because, you know, that's just how it seems to work at the moment. So, yeah. All in all, I'd say I'm really, really, you know, I, I love getting a new F1 game every year. It's, it's always really, really cool. So, you know, I'm, you know, you know, I, I, you know, I'm looking forward to playing more of the F2 and playing more with the F2, and I'm looking forward to when they finally get the 2019 F2 in here. Play as Mick Schumacher. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, um, I'll be back tomorrow night, guys, with some more F1 2019. It'll either be tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I will let you guys know in the Discord server and on Twitter uh, as to what time the stream tomorrow night will be. But we'll be back tomorrow night with some more F1 2019. Where we will continue with a career. We will be moving on, I think, next is Azerbaijan. So that'll be fun. Um, and yeah, and then Thursday night, uh, Gran Turismo Sport. And then, yeah, we'll see what happens after that. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Thank you very much to all my new followers. Thank you very much to all those who uh, 
chatted with me along for the second stream of the day. I'm glad I decided to do a second stream. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, and yeah, make sure guys you do join the Discord server. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. You can find my Twitter handles and Instagram handles just below. Make sure you add me if you want to do some multiplayer. Add me on PSN at Bud4211. And uh, happy to jam some multiplayer with some of you lovely, lovely people. Um, yeah, that's really all I've got for you guys this evening. As I said, I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed myself. Fun to talk to you guys. It was fun to do some really good racing. And, um, you know, it's always, it's always good to get a new F1 game. So I'm very, very happy. Anyway, guys, I shall see you tomorrow. Until next time. Farewell. Yeah,